Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Jordan and in this video I'm going to explain just why Wiley is dubbed the Godfather of Grime. Oh. Don't get twisted. Wiley is beat. You can't get no more street than Wiley is beat. Often recognised for his MCing, but his significance runs much deeper than lyrics. If we're talking about Wiley, we need to discuss the pioneer, a producer, a lyricist and a driving force, Esky Boy, Grimes Patient Zero. Seemingly born into music, his father was a musician in London's thriving 1980s reggae sound systems and at home in Bow, E3, East London, a young Wiley toyed with instruments but found that he could recognise his creative vision much quicker through his father's production software on a PC. By the mid-90s, Wiley made his first dive into music as a producer and MC in a jungle collective called SS Crew, or Silverstorm Crew. As the raves and pirate radio scenes moved on, so too did Wiley, and by the year 2000 he found himself in Pay As You Go Cartel, a successful garage collective, who managed a top 13 hit with champagne dancers. <laughs> But while he was always relatively peripheral to the UK garage scene, his style and vision didn't quite sit right with the genre, and as garage's style waned, with his innovative mindset, Wiley made his major impact. He moved away from the accepted garage formula to combine a Jamaican reggae sound clash influence with a framework which owed something to garage, but was darker, more stripped back, it was bass heavy, but felt colder. Soon there was a small subculture boom with other pioneering young artists developing a colder, grimier tone. Wiley's Roldy crew at the forefront of a movement which evolved rapidly on London's thriving pirate radio and rave scenes. Both MCs and DJs sought out a sound that would compound the change in tone. Wiley could see that instrumentals had power. His SKB productions were so prolific at this early stage Stage, that he found himself at the centre of the culture. Everybody wanted that Esky Boy sound, with his menacing synths, abrupt rhythmic patterns and wobbling bass formed on a Korg synth preset, gliding square, Wiley formed a cottage industry. Shipping white label vinyls around local record shops such as Roman Road's legendary rhythm division and literally selling straight from the boot of his car, Wiley solidified a sound that would form the basis of grime moving forward. To understand the sonical roots of grime, here are the top five most notable genre-forming productions from Wiley Cat. Five. Fire Hydrant. This is a Clash classic, with vocal dubs from Wiley and Rico Dan, Frisco and most notably Trim, in his infamous clash against the late Storming. This sparse production left plenty of space for vocals to shine. Four. Ice Storm, one of my all time favourites, with a drum loop full of energy and those icy sounds that are now synonymous with grime that Wiley created. Over the years we've heard these sounds sampled over and over again. Free Igloo. This is probably the most well known on the list because of the vocal release. For many this defines a time when the scene was beginning to gain momentum. Two More. This is a bit of a controversial one because I'm sure many would argue this should be number one. It's a fan favourite. This sparse, bass heavy arrangement is grime at its purest. But there can only ever be one at the top and it has to be Eskimo. This is the first pioneering production of the scene. Wiley released this in 2002. He actually produced it in 1999 but held on to it until the time was right, selling over 10,000 copies from the boot of his car. This is an iconic grime scene classic. That sound 
was like a big influence. There was nothing like that sound before that. These are the five that really compounded Wiley's sound, but his catalogue of instrumentals is endless. At the end of the video, I'm gonna share some more for those who are interested. But for now, let's focus on Wiley, the MC. He's by no means the most technical or content heavy, but he changed a sound. Other garage MCs in Page You Go Cartel, Heartless Crew, So Solid Crew had moved in the same direction, but he moved way past the boundaries of acceptance and stayed there without compromise. It was okay that he didn't fit in. He wanted to show that a different sound could find a platform without the need of any pre-existing genres. I've heard they don't like making garage because I use their scene to make my own sound. The Eskimo sound is fine, recognize it's fine. In his first single, What You Call It, from his debut album, Treading on Thin Ice, Wiley explicitly describes the transitional period that was unfolding. A new sound that wasn't accepted by any other genre. Its own thing, but still it? without a name. <laughs> That's a big question, what you call it? Sublo, dubstep, SE, frontline music. What you call it? I don't have a name for it. New. Something new. It just makes you bob your head. Tell us what you call it, then. He understood how to create hype, create energy. His flow always snapped on the beat, so much so that usually when he jumped on a dub with other people, you could only ever imagine his flow sitting on that beat afterwards. This was especially true in the early stages of grime, when everything was raw, nobody knew what was acceptable or not, what flowed well on the beats that were defining the scene, and Wiley stood out as a vocal leader. I'm the coldest boy you've ever met, I'm the coldest boy you'll ever meet, you can't defeat me, you can't erase me, I'm staying, you can never get rid of me, I'm staying here, who's that lady? He knew how to create and deal with conflict. He still does. He's clashed practically every notable MC in the scene and has been central to the war dub subculture which sits at the heart of grime. His tight delivery filled with catchy non sequiturs, cockney rhyming slang, Jamaican patois, knowledge and wisdom laced with sarcasm and humour, positioned Wiley as one of the all-time great MCs. And he defined the original grime style vocal sound, which many have gone on to mimic. So I wanted to pull together Wiley's top five vocals, but when I thought about it, I realised you really need two subcategories. Raw vocals from raves and pirate radio, and then studio vocals. So here are Wiley's top five raw vocals that were pioneering to the scene. Five. Wiley versus Nasty Jack at Sidewinder. This is where Wiley's on stage calling out Nasty Jack and he happens to be in the building and storms up on stage. This is epic. Four, Wiley in the Best of Risky Roads DVD. Blood, I emerge like a jungle fever, volume one creeper, Roman street sweeper. Don't get gashed by the hour, rude boy, I get gashed by the meter. While I'll senior, lemons will lean your E3 teacher, LOM preacher, UK speak. Three, Wiley versus Kano, Lord of the Mics. That Lord of the Mics stairwell is another staple of the grime scene, it's iconic. Now on a level, I'm going for the levels of flow and I flow rapid. Who's that? Willie the kit, a bus rapid, a bus a cap in the sound boy you think is dropping a clamp down on MCs. They can't hack it if my flow goes missing. Track it down if an obstacle comes, slap it down. And I told you before, swing anybody round, anybody from yeah, any time. Yeah, we'll get... yeah. Two. DJ Slimsy, Sidewinder, Wiley and Dizzy Rascal back to back. When Wiley was bringing a young Dizzy Rascal through, their back to back sets were infamous. No one could touch them. And at one, it has to be Wiley versus Lethal B on Deja Vu 92.3. This is the biggest clash in grime scene history. Wiley's top five studio vocals is a bit more subjective, so I'll be interested to see what other people think. But as far as my top five, in at five, I've got Bring Em All, Holy Grind, featuring Devlin. This shows that Wiley can stand the test of time. Four, I've got Class of 07. And the cream kick ain't even my main kick, huh? My 
Three, I've got Doorway from Wiley's debut album, Treadmill Thin Ice. Two, Where's My Brother? Breaking down the friction between Wiley and Dirty Goods and his brother Crazy Titch. And at one, I've got Gangsters. When this track came out, you couldn't get away from it. Wiley discusses his beef with Lethal B. To no one seen. The government tried to destroy my race, but then man turned into. You think when Yaks come to England, they want to be random? I don't think so. Whole security firm on the scene got the red beam on the biggest man in your team. They'll come with Beyond pioneering production sounds and genre defining flows, Wiley offers one other standout factor which cements him as the godfather of grime the group mentality. Not just a scene, a family. Wiley was never scared of sharing the spotlight, he just wanted to make sure that the movement continued to grow, a sound which he had carried on his back since its inception. Wiley has helped bring through many artists who are now household names. Dizzy Rascal, Kano, Tinchy Strider, Chip, Skepta, to name but a few. And when producing dubs, he didn't just vocal them all himself, he gave other talented artists a chance to shine. I remember buying his Ice Ring dub in 2003. It didn't just showcase the beat, but it had four vocal versions laced by Rico Dan, Breeze, Tinchy Strider and Kano. He released the dub again, but with vocals from Sharky Major, All In One, Scratchy and Dizzy Rascal. He used his buzz on the underground to showcase other talented artists, giving them a chance to build their own following and hype. And when the culture moved away from pirate radio shows onto national radio such as Westwood, he used his notoriety again to provide a platform for younger second wave grime MCs such as Ice Kid, Chipmunk and Little D. Now this is Chipmunk first. Chipmunk first gonna step up out of North Chip, London. Yeah, Chipmunk's out of North London. He's gonna do his On thing. Your grind. Will clap at ya. And if you ain't fam luck, like, don't act pallier. Every day I got a black rack sack, two pens, two pads. Yeah, fam, I'm a carrier. I write bars all day, you know, dog, and I sound class, man. I get dead, dog. Tight Ice Kid. Ice Kid's up next. We're ready to do this. Oh, Tight Westwood. Everyone locked in. Radio One. Return of the 16 year olds. Shower and time. Do Listen. For the young ones. Cobra, been on block since 98. On my estate, it's highly bait. There's not one guy that I highly rate. Jake's move on the side, so I hide my face. Continually, Wiley has looked to support the scene rather than just focus on individual dominance because he knew that it would take more than him to create a sustainable scene that would stand the test of time. With the money that he raised from selling vinyls and CDs from the boot of his car, he paid to rent a residential studio in Bermondsey and didn't just invite his crew roll deep, but effectively the whole scene in Bow, East London at the time. He was the first to see Dizzy Rascal's talent and bring him to raves and pirate radio and studio sessions. He paid 10k to see Tinchy Strider to have serious studio time and look to see no money. For his first tour of Australia, he paid to bring Skepta with him because he wanted to broaden his fan base and he started up Eskimo Dance, a club night devoted to grime. The list goes on. He has been there for the scene. Wiley has been there to see a sound grow into a subculture and evolve into a genre. From the boot of his car on pirate radio to selling out shows and mainstream radio, this is why he's so emotive when the topic of grime is brought up. If it wasn't for the foundations laid by Wiley and other pioneering artists that went through the struggle, then much of the culturally important music that we hear today would not be available, nor would it be a viable revenue stream. So whether you like Wiley or not, he was at the center of a movement which created a shift in the culture, and he stuck by it even in its wilderness because he knew it would take time. This is why he's a pioneer and the godfather of grime. If you made it this far, I just want to say thank you for watching. This is the first time I've done anything like this, so I'd appreciate it if you let me know what you thought in the comments. Thanks a lot. Peace out.